Hello, welcome back. I'm Mr. Curtis and this is Bruce. Today we're going to be continuing along with drawing and uh, drawing from real life, observational drawing. This time we're going to be focusing on um, right shading. Uh, Bruce found the title button. So yeah, we're going to be focusing on doing some shading exercises. So we'll learn how to turn this, a very flat shape, a circle, turn that into a ball. That's right. What do you mean, Mr. Curtis? Are we going to be learning how to do magic? Well, um, all drawing is kind of like magic in a way because with your pencil you can create things out of nothing. But, no, not exactly. We're going to be learning how to turn a flat circle into a round ball by using the power of shading. So, Bruce, you're going to go and uh, over to your workstation and I'm going to get started uh, showing these folks about shading. All right? Okay, let me let you help you down here. Okay, there we go. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so shading. I'm going to be using my 6B black pencil, but just a regular old uh, HB pencil would work just fine. And just a regular piece of paper like this. And basically what shading is, is um, it's understanding the darks and the lights uh, of, of an object that you're looking at. So it's basically, it's coloring with your pencil. Dark and light, those are called values, darks and lights. So with a pencil, the harder you press, the darker it's going to be. And as you let go of pressure from that pencil, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter as you go along. And it gets gradually lighter. So I'd encourage you to try this as an experiment to see if you can make a gradation like this, where you can start off very dark, with a lot of pressure pushing down hard, and then as you color across, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And that's uh, called a gradation, so from dark to light. And basically, um, you probably know that but already, but uh, that is the basics of shading. So now, let's turn our circle into a ball. So first of all, we need a circle. I'm going to use something uh, to make my circle a perfect circle. You don't have to do this. Uh, if you don't mind having um, just a hand-drawn circle, that's fine. I'm going to make mine like this. Okay, so there's our circle. Now I'm going to make this into a ball. First of all, what we have to do is decide where our light source is coming from. So imagine that this circle or this ball that we're going to make is in a room and there's a light in the room. And I'm going to, going to decide that light is coming from this side. So that side where the light is, that part is going to be just white. That's going to be the white of the paper. We're going to pretend it's a very strong light. So then our gradation our, is going to start on this side. That's where the side we're going to do the shading on. The shade the shadow is always on the opposite side um, of the object as the light source. So I'm going to start just coloring this ball in, our imaginary ball. And I'm going to start out with the darkest part being right at the edge. And as I, and the other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pretend that this light source is from coming up from above here. So I want the darkest area to be directly across from that uh, light source. So I'm going to just keep coloring that in, going around and around, making it's important when you're coloring that you uh, imagine that you're tracing along the outside circumference of that ball. So you'll notice as I get closer to the middle, my line starts straightening out a little bit too, because that helps give that uh, uh, that feeling of roundness of the ball. Okay, so I'm just going to keep on coloring this in a little bit darker. Try to get my values going from the darkest to the lightest here, and I'm not doing too badly here. I'm going to keep on going. I'm gonna even go a little bit this way. Let's see how I might. I'm feeling a bit reckless. Yeah, I'm going, yeah, 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 yeah. So where that light is, that's where we want the brightest spot. 
Well, already you can see that's starting to get round. That's starting to look sort of like a ball shape, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that. I'm get a little bit darker down here. And it's a little bit sketchy in this area. I'm gonna fix that in a minute. Okay, so I can even go a little bit darker down here. I can keep working at it. I'm not gonna get too perfectionist about it though. Uh, and also, what I can do is add a little bit of a shadow down here and where, the, where it's sitting, where the ball is sitting on the ground. If you add a bit of a shadow, that also kind of grounds it in three-dimensional space. Makes it look like it's a real thing. There we go. Not too bad. Okay, we're on our way to making this ball a real thing. Okay, so now I've got uh, something else here. This is another tool, and this is called a blending stub. Uh, this is what you can use to blend all those little hairy lines that you made with your pencil. Blend them together to get more of a smooth, smooth gradation from darks to lights. You're just basically you're just rubbing that uh, graphite together and smoothing it all up. And uh, if you don't have a blending stub, I'm going to show you how to make one. And uh, because they're very easy to make, it's just rolled up paper. And um, if you don't uh, have the right materials for that, or don't have the patience for that, guess what? You can also use your finger. Your finger works pretty good for blending. Also, uh, things like cardboard, uh, lots of things. Paper towel can work to blend with. Um, a blending stub is nice because it, you can get a point on it, and then you can actually also use that for, uh, for even drawing, too. So there's our ball. Not bad. Not too bad. Okay. I could keep working on that and making it extra round. I've got some imperfections on my easel here, so those are starting to come through a little bit, but um, I don't mind. There we go. There we go. Yeah, okay. We just made a circle into a ball, more or less. And I could keep working at that as I <laughs> really feel like just keep keeping uh, uh, blending it and making it just perfect. Okay, but I'm gonna leave it there. There's our ball. There you go, voila. Now, the thing I'm gonna do next is show you how to make one of these blending stubs so that you too can blend your uh, shading together and make it look nice and smooth. Blending stump. Okay, so we're gonna use a piece of paper again. You're gonna need uh, some tape. Uh, it can be uh, any kind of tape. It can be masking tape, it can be scotch tape, uh, the clear tape, doesn't really matter. It could be duct tape if you want, um, whatever you got. And also you're gonna need some a pair of scissors. And also you're gonna need, um, optionally, you'll need a knife. Um, that one you may need a, an idol to help you. Um, that's not totally necessary, so that's sort of an optional thing, but uh, we're gonna get into that. And uh, what else do you need? Um, I th oh, the other optional thing you can use is sandpaper. I've got a block of sandpaper here. Um, just any kind of sandpaper will work. That's another optional thing. So let's get to it here. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this in half. So I'm just gonna fold this in half here. There we go, fold that in half. You just have a regular piece of eight and a half by 11 uh, paper, uh, regular printer, printer paper. You can fold it in half. And what I like to do is if you fold that paper back and forth a bunch of times, that breaks down the fibers of the paper and then uh, you can rip it and you'll get a nice straight, nice straight edge. Uh, it, it'll be a little fuzzy because you're ripping it, but it'll be straight. Okay, let's try that. And then you just get it started there and then you pull it more or less straight. I guess I could have folded it a few more times, but for this purpose, it's okay. So you're just gonna use half of that. And then the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cut off just a corner of that uh, rectangle. And so the, um, the part that you don't cut is about, you want it to be about a little more than two thumbs width high. So maybe about halfway. And then you're just gonna cut it. This part doesn't really matter how uh, you cut that. Straight across, just like that. There we go. Get 
get rid of that. And then we gotta roll this up. We're gonna roll it up really tight. That's really important. You have to roll it up super tight. So this always takes me a little while, so I might end up fast forwarding this part. Uh, to get it started, a good way to get it started is uh, just using a scissor. I wish I had something a bit longer. I actually might have a ruler. Yeah, it's a straight edge. Nice straight edge. There we go. There. That gets, that gets that curl going. There we go. And now I can start working at that edge. And I want it to get nice, nice and, and, uh, and tight. As tight as you can get it. Because uh, you don't want it to be too loose. If it's, if it's loose, it's not going to work too well as a uh, blending stone. Okay, I think I got that pretty tight. Just keep rolling it back and forth once you feel that it's starting to roll. And then, just gonna roll it up as tightly as you can, all the way across. And I like to use my fingers to do this. Just going all the way across. I never roll it straight, so it's always a little, a little wonky. Okay, there we go. Uh, that is your rolled up piece of paper. That's basically your bend blending stuff. Now, now what I have to do is get your tape here, and you're gonna just take a little piece of that tape, and you're gonna tape it up so it doesn't come unraveled. Okay, here we go. Somewhere in the middle, that's where you wanna tape it, because we gotta do some cutting yet. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now um, we're going to, this, the end that, that's sort of coned like that, uh, that's the end uh, result of that uh, cutoff part. So the more solid part, that's what you want uh, to have the, where you have, want the tip to be, the business end, let's say. So you can cut this off or you can leave it if you want. The other end here, this end, kind of feel where, where it's solid. And then you just want to give that a snip. <sighs> Hopefully you have some nice strong scissors. There we go. Okay, ooh, that's pretty, not too bad. Got a little bit of a hole in there. But uh, now what we're gonna do is kind of try to trim it with your scissors to get that nice tip. Okay, this is where a knife comes in handy. But uh, scissors can work too. You just gotta use your muscles. Okay, so you get a relatively decent tip. There you go, okay. And um, it's pretty rough that way. If you have a knife, or a parent who has a knife, they can shave this for you, a nice sharp uh, point. And if you have sandpaper, uh, you can use that sandpaper to uh, get it even sharper. And that'll help you with your blending. There you go, blending stump. Okay, now that you've got your blending stump and you've had a little bit of practice with shading, now it's time to do some observational drawing with uh, adding in the shading. So find yourself a very simple object. Here I've got a toilet paper roll. So everybody should have one of those. So if you've got one sitting in your recycling bin, pull it out and put a lamp right next to it so that you've got a very, very bright light source. And uh, that'll be your lightest value in your drawing. And then just see if you can replicate uh, the values, the shading as best you can with that very, very simple object in front of you. Uh, shadows are what make uh, drawing uh, come to life, you know, what would give it weight and what give your drawing the illusion of existing in three-dimensional space. So it's a uh, it's really important skill to learn. So um, give it a try. That's it for today, except we have to see how Bruce is coming along with his shading exercises. He's working over here. Let's go have a look. Hey Bruce, how are you doing? You're having trouble with that blending stuff. Let's see how you did with your ball exercise. Oh, looks like Bruce imagined his ball was in a room with no light source. Well, that's pretty creative, Bruce. Okay, until next time, keep thinking creatively and be kind to yourself.